Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome to our uh, third day of Asexual Awareness Week. Um, it's also close to the end, I think the third week of LGBTQ History Month. And so, um, yeah, we're just taking this week to focus on asexuality, which is the A in 2S LGBTQIA+. Uh, it, it also stands for aromantic and agender. Um, but today what we're going to focus on it is because we've already talked about asexuality. We've already talked about aromanticism, um, specifically my husband, who is aero-ace. Um, so today we're going to talk about what asexuality isn't. And um, yeah, we do this while we or like in between playing uh, our daily LinkedIn games. Feel free to interrupt at any time if you want to call me or uh, leave a comment if you have thoughts or questions or if you're asexual or aromantic and want to let me know your thoughts on what I'm saying because I hate to talk about people without people. Um, but I am a pretty well-researched person. <laughs> My name is Sophie of sexwithsophie.com. I teach people how to talk to each other about sex and sexuality. So um, this is, again, just my opportunity to open up the floor to you. But I realize it's quite early. So uh, that's why, again, I started to try to pick a daily topic to chit-chat about uh, just to kind of fill the time between uh, doing our puzzles and offering up some space for you to call in and share your thoughts and have a discussion with me about anything that's on your mind, whether it's these topics, uh, asexuality, or anything else. Hi, and we're here with uh, Baby Day, who literally was asleep five seconds ago. Mommy's talking too loud. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. I think that's what's up. We've also had, um, we're getting our hedges done, so the dogs and the, it was just a whole kerfuffle a few minutes ago. Um, yeah, so she's probably just settling down from all of that noise. So if you hear some stuff going on, that's probably what it is too. Um, just the guys in and out back. All right, so let's uh, just kind of set up really quickly, like what, again, asexuality isn't. Um, asexuality is not um, being celibate or abstinent. So it's not just simply, you know, not having sex. <laughs> it is uh, a sexual orientation. So it's the way your brain handles attraction. So if you're, again, asexual, you don't experience sexual attraction. Um, or if you're uh, one of the kind of subcategories of asexuality, such as like demisexual or gray sexual, then you only experience sexual attraction in a certain way or capacity. Um, but to be like celibate um, is to choose to not have sex. Uh, to abstain is to choose to not be, you know, sexually active, um, whether it's to try not to get pregnant or because you're fed up or just because you uh, just don't want to, you know, but if you still experience sexual attraction, then that's, you know, you're, you're allosexual. Um, now there is a thing called catosexual and that is a person who is asexual, but, but they used to be allosexual. So they might've had some kind of trauma. It might've been sexual uh, or essay, um, or it might have just been some other type of trauma, and now they no longer experience sexual attraction. Um, aromantic is not experiencing romantic attraction. And so that's, um, you know, just kind of an overview of what it isn't. It's not choosing, it's not a choice, it's who you are, it's your sexual orientation. And again, Cato sexual is. Um, you know, they didn't have a choice either. That is now their sexual orientation, but it might have been because of some form of trauma. 
Um, so hopefully that explains it a little better and we'll talk about a little bit more about what asexuality isn't after we uh, finish our cross climb game. And again, feel free to interrupt me at any time. I'm just chit chatting about um, some thoughts on our today's topic until and and if you choose to call in, I know it's super early. It's like not even 10 a.m. where I am. So it's like five in the morning in America on the East Coast. So um, probably a lot earlier might just be late in the evening in California. So, you know, if you're up late and want to chit chat, please feel free to give me a call. Um, otherwise, again, let's go ahead and get our cross climb puzzle started. And to these are, you know, usually quite easy. I like to go from my least favorite to my most favorite LinkedIn games. There are four. Um, so cross climb is just super simple. So let's see. A sound from a car horn or from a goose. It's going to be a honk. Oop, if I can spell it. A uh, long, impassioned, angry speech. Okay, I'll have to skip that. I don't know. Uh, sharpen as one's skills hone. Uh, numerical placement on a leaderboard. What? Numerical placement on a leaderboard? I don't know. Possible nickname for someone named Henry? Hank? Okay, that would be rank. And I guess this one would be long impassioned, angry speech, rant. All right, so now we have to put them in order. From how the letters change, which opens up the top and bottom row. So a term for a place to live and a regular payment some people make for where they live. Home and rent. This, these are just... <coughs> Excuse me. These are kind of laughably simple, but still enjoyable. And I got stuck on too, so I can't act like I was perfect on that. Um, while we set up Pinpoint, again, just to kind of get back into what asexuality is not. Um, asexuality is not being an incel. And an incel is somebody who is involuntarily celibate. These are usually the, the neck beard, gamer, you know, um, glasses wearing nerds that you kind of envision as uh, Star Wars fans. Or tri the, and I'm all of these things. I'm a glasses wearing fat nerd, so I can't, <laughs> I can't really talk. <laughs> but... But that's what, when you think of incel, that's what you think of. I probably have a neck beard situation before I had all of the electrolysis over five years that I did. Um, so, <laughs> although I'm probably a classic incel, I'm talking about traditionally men who um, are involuntarily celibate. And so they lash out, they're very misogynistic. They lash out at uh, women and females because of uh, their own lack of self-esteem and feeling that they would be, uh, rejected. So t in order to not feel that rejection, they, they, uh, reject women. Um, so it's a whole culture. Uh, I do feel like it's kind of a early 2000s thing. It's, it doesn't seem to be, um, playing out. What it's kind of morphed into is this alpha beta male thing which is kind of, you would think the opposite because incels are typically fat and nasties. Um, whereas these alpha beta guys are these jacked up gym guys, but they're the same guys. They're the same guys who are misogynistic and hate women due to the fact that um, incels feel like, oh, I can't get women. Um, women don't want me. So I have to project my rejection onto them. Whereas alpha, beta, you know, masculine, trad husband guys, I guess, um, they are mad at women because they perceive them as like a lesser gender or they, or they want to maintain, um, 
I guess, like traditional values so much. Like, so they expect their woman to allow them to just cheat because they feel like uh, men have the uh, biological imperative to to have multiple partners. They feel like they can um, uh, trick women into like cooking for them and, but you know, and, and washing their clothes and living as if they are their housewife without actually offering them some form of um, commitment or relationship. So it's, it's still a, just a visceral hate for women and toward women um, just from like the other side of the coin. It's like, you know, how many women can we have sex with versus incels who feel like they can't have sex with women. It's, it's weird, but it's just, again, the same two sides of the same coin. And that is not asexuality <laughs> just to, to pin it back. Um, it's not asexuality. So just to move on to our next game, please let me know if you have any thoughts on that, because I could, do a whole thing on and I probably will do a whole thing on just toxic masculinity this whole alpha beta um Andrew Tate kind of lifestyle thing um because it's abhorrent and it's terrible and and they're very anti-feminist which is um insane to me (laughs) they always accuse women of misandry which is like man-hating but you can't even have misandry without misogyny um so again that's a whole that's a whole thing so let's play our next game. Again, Just I'm just chatting with you about my thoughts on this topic because um, I really am just trying to fill some space to give you an opportunity to call me. So if you have thoughts on what asexuality isn't, incels, toxic masculinity, any of these topics, um, definitely call in, let me know. Um, or leave a comment. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and move on to pinpoint. <laughs> um, now this one is like my second least favorite game because again it's just too easy. I um, usually get it in a few guesses, but let's see. So black. Uh, that's just not helpful. We'll say crayons. <laughs> Navy. Uh, dark colors. Okay, beans. Beans, Pinto and Lima were the other clues. Um, yeah, so I'm shocked that, that took me three guesses. <laughs> Especially one of my husband's nicknames for me is Beans. So, ah, <laughs> uh, he's gonna he's gonna love that. Um, let's go and set up Tango. And just a quick note, um, again about what asexuality isn't. So it's not abstinence. It's not celibacy it's not being an incel um also we're coming up on november and uh some of you may know that that is the the season for no nut november (laughs) which which is a time when um dudes and women i guess can uh abstain from masturbation sex basically holding holding it in for for all of november um the thought is to, um, I, I, I guess there's two approaches I've heard. One is that you're trying to take that month to essentially um, build it up so that come December in the season of giving, I guess, you know, you're, you know, building it up to release <laughs> and have like this big, powerful, amazing um, orgasm or ejaculation. I don't know. But I've also heard that, and I think more, it, it, no, 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 November was started more so as a fast, um, a way to um, to kind of um, abstain from pornography, from sex, to just give your body a break, um, which I I can get behind. But I think you know, for people who are trying to say, oh, I'm going to be asexual for a month, or I'm going to practice asexuality for a month, like, again, it's, that's not. That's not a apples to apples comparison because again, asexuality is a orientation. It's not something you choose or can do. You can certainly say you're being celibate or abstaining for a month or you know, no, not gonna nut for a month, you know, but it's not that you're suddenly asexual for a month. Um, so yeah, look up 
no nut november if you want to participate <laughs> but please know that there, there's the studies have shown over and over that holding in your semen does not help you on the sports field um I, th I think there is a truth in the uh, post-nut clarity situation where once you have an orgasm, you do kind of come back down. As uh, Louis C.K. says, it's like the Hulk after he comes back down. He's like, oh, <laughs> where am I? <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, but it's, you know, that's that can happen at any point. You don't have to, like, edge yourself the whole month to then release and feel that no nut clarity or uh, post nut clarity. I digress. That's my <laughs> thoughts on that. Let's move into tango. And again, feel free to call in or comment if you have any thoughts on no nut November, if you're gonna be participating, um, if you have a different reason for trying it or doing it, I'd love to know. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and talk about <laughs> Or play our tango game now again this is my second favorite I actually really have come to enjoy this because it oh the well they're usually very challenging but this one seems like it might be a little simple basically you're you can't have more than two symbols in a row uh, the X means you have to have a different symbol that equals means it has to be the same symbol on either side um, and you have to have an even amount of suns and moons on each row and in, and in each column so we know that there's three moons here. There's got to be three suns. So all of these are suns. Um, you can't have two, more than two in a row. So these are suns on either side. And now you need another moon to have uh, this row complete. You got three moons. So we all of these are suns. Uh, let's see. We can kind of start to do some deductions. Okay, this one might be a little... A little interesting so we have um, only one moon left for this row because we have two so we have to have three suns and one moon so if we have an equal sign here that means that these have to be those suns so that has to be a sun that has to be a sun because you cannot have um, one moon left because you that would have to be a moon and you already have two so um, yeah, so those are both suns. And then again, you can't have more than two in a row, so that has to be a moon. And then that third sun will be here, and also that's the opposite symbol. That's the opposite symbol, so that's a moon. That's the opposite symbol, that's a sun. That's the opposite symbol, that's a moon. Can't have more than two in a row, so that's a sun. Opposite symbol, plus you can't have more than two in a row, so that's a moon. Uh, we need a third moon to fill out this row. Two in a row. Uh, let's see. We need a sun for this column. We need a moon for this row. We need a sun for this column. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, can't have more than two in a row. We need a sun for this column. Uh, we need a moon for this row and a sun for this row. And there we go. Yeah, so that one was pretty fun. A little bit more challenging. I like it. Um, yeah, so let's set up my favorite puzzle, which is Queens, also known as a star battle. So if baby girl stays asleep, if things stay calm, once we finish Queens, we can move on to um, play some star battles because they're so fun. I love them. Um, and again, if you want to interrupt me at any point, please feel free. I know it's early. Sorry. So if you're why I actually have been um, taking these recordings and putting them up. So if you're watching this. Uh, at a time that's convenient for you <laughs> feel free to leave a comment on YouTube or IG or TikTok or wherever I'm posting this oh. and um, let me know your thoughts uh, so let's move on to um, another commentary I guess on what asexuality is not um, so I don't know if you've heard of this movement out of I want to say South Korea uh, basically it's called the 4B movement which stands for 4, four Bihan let's see Bihan, Bishusan, Bionay, Bisuksei 
B sex sue. Um, so that's no marriage, no childbirth, no romance, and no sexual relationships. So 4B. Um, this is something that started again, yeah, in Korea because the women there were <laughs> getting so fed up with men um, that they just, you know, went on to do their, oh, I got a visit, site visitor for from Hong, Hong Kong. Wow. That's nice. Um, yeah, you can go to my website, sexwithsophie.com and become a member for free. We have a great community there. But yeah, for 4B, <laughs> um, it's something that's actually moved into America. I don't know if you've heard this whole thing about, uh, w would a woman choose to be alone in a forest with a man or a bear? And, uh, a lot of women are choosing the bear and it's because of just the amount of SA and grape and harassment and stalking that uh, women, <laughs> hey, <laughs> that women receive. I just got a sweet comment um, from somebody else named Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Yes, I do. I love, I uh, love puzzles. Um, so yeah, if you have any thoughts on the LinkedIn games, if they're a little bit simple, that's why I like to do star battles after this. So if you stick around after we finish Queens, we'll we'll do a couple of star battles. But yeah, so 4B, just to kind of sum this up, 4B is not asexuality. It's just women choosing to be celibate and to not engage in sex or childbirth because of <laughs> femininity um, being just bashed. And so again, it's coming into... Um, uh, America, dare you to try some star battles from Puzz SQ? Um, I do Puzzle Baron. Can you post a link? I'd love to check that out, though. Especially because the thing I'm finding with Puzzle Baron is that um, you can't really choose your difficulty. You can choose, like, how many stars and the grid and everything. But I love, um, like, the Hoshi or... Um, the ones on your phone where you can choose the difficulty. Um, but yeah, let's do our Queens battle and then we can move into some Puzzle Baron star battles. Cause that's all I really had to say about <laughs> what asexuality isn't in regards to 4B. Thank you. That's a language I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Puzzle square. Ooh. These look fun. Yeah, let's knock out Queens and then we'll we'll check that out. Thank you so much, Sophie. <laughs> All of the logic puzzles on Puzzle SQ are created by actual humans, by the way, as opposed to being computer generated. That's helpful. That's helpful. And I'm not that great at them. Like, let's, yeah, let's knock out queens. I think that, um, and I'll certainly uh, try some of these too. But we'll knock out queens first. Um, just because they're so easy. These are just always going to be a one star where you're trying to find um, one, in this case, crown in each row, each column, and in each colored shape. Um, did you make Puzzle SQ, Sophie? Um, so in this one, we can pretty readily know that the blue star is going to be here because there's only uh, blue in this row and in this column. So we can take away everything around it, everything in its row, everything in its column, and every other blue cell because we've already accounted for its one crown. Now we can look at these sticks <laughs> and see that we, you know, can only have orange on this row. We can only have green in this column, so we can't have anything else in this column. Uh, same with this brown. That's already accounted for. Um, same with this gray. Can't have anything else in this column. Uh, can't have anything here because that would eliminate all of the yellow. And... Now we can start to kind of chunk down a little bit. So in this column, we only have purple 
So we can take away everything around it, everything in its row, everything in its column, and the rest of the purple can go. Um, let's see, in this row we only have green, so the rest of that green can go. Uh, we only have pink in this column, so we can't have any pink here. So that leaves orange as the only possibility for this column. So we can take away everything around it, everything in its row, which is the rest of that color. Um, because we, let's see, okay, well. All right, so we have three shapes solidly within the bottom three rows. So we can't have anything that's not this pink, yellow, or brown in the bottom three rows because the crown will definitely be accounted for for each of those rows in these three shapes. So that leaves our gray, which we can take everything away around it in its row and in its column. That leaves our red, that leaves our yellow, that leaves our pink, and that leaves our brown, our final crown. So well done, well done. Uh, good job, everybody. Two and a half minutes, even with a little chatting. Okay, so somebody else made Puzzle SQ, but that's okay. That's it's still impressive because I like as fun as these are to play. Like, I think about stuff like Excel. Like, I'm really good at Excel. Like, I'm not there's people who are amazing, they can do the competitions and things. I'm not at that level, but I mean, I, I know my way around a uh, you know, a, a, a V lookup, <laughs> but, um, you know, I still can't imagine the genius behind the people who created Excel. And so, um, it's the same with this kind of thing. Like these puzzles can be so challenging and fun, but wow, to actually be the people who created these puzzles, that's impressive. That's really impressive. Um, and so just to, check out Puzzle SQ's star battles, which are, again, just like queens. I'm gonna just uh, take a look here. Okay. Let's just do the first one and see how it goes. And <laughs> uh, Check out the gameplay and the mechanisms and all that jazz. I'm going to guess you just do a star. Can you? Uh, trial mode? Huh. Erase. Okay. Hmm. So. Okay, you double click to do your dashes. Okay, let's give this a shot. Erase box marks, okay. So in this puzzle, we're looking for two stars. Um, yeah, so it's kind of similar. It's just, we just don't have colors, but you're still looking for two stars in each row, each column, and uh, in each shape. Um, this one seems fairly straightforward. We have quite a bit of uh, three buys, what I call them. Um, so three by ones, three by twos, three by threes, you can always eliminate the middles. So in these three by twos, you can take, oh, sorry. You can take away the middle. In this three by three, you can take away the very middle. Um, and the same with the sticks. <laughs> the tetris sticks i guess you can <laughs> take away everything that's uh how that did you can take away everything that's not oh, okay you can drag it in this one too that's not in the um row or column of the stick uh this shape and this shape completely fill the first two columns so you can take away everything that's not in those columns and now we have a three by so we can take away the middle that leaves up oh, that leaves this star. You can take away everything around it. Um, we know on this row that if we had one here or none here, we're, we have at least one here, so we cannot have a star here. Um, we also know that 
if we have two stars within a five by like five by two or a five by uh, one we can't have a star in the second and fourth position next to it um, that'd be the same on the other side too if this was in the middle because if you had a star here or here you wouldn't be able to fit two in the stick um, because these two uh, stars have to be here and here and here and here we can take away everything else in the row for these two rows um, let's see this is now a three by one so we can take away the middle that leaves the stars there we can take away the rest of that row and everything around the stars because they cannot touch so there has to be a star here uh, this is now a two a four by one so we've already taken away everything next to it um, we can take away these stars because we know there's a star here and a star here um, so if we had stars by each of these that would eliminate the ability to have your second star here and here um, that makes this one a three by two so we can take away the middle that leaves a star here so we know there's only one star here. Now this one is a three by two, so we can take away the middle. And we know there's a star there. And we can't have anything around it. Um, these two columns are accounted for, so we can take away everything. Oh, this is getting so weird looking with it. And I have the worst eyesight. So <laughs> this is, uh, I kind of hate it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it looks like we can change some of this i might change some of this uh I'm just stars oh goodness okay that's okay i'll play around with that in a second i just don't like the visuals on this very much i'm sorry um Okay, so let's see what else we can kind of start to deduce. Um, there's definitely a star here, so there can't be one here. Um, my goodness. I gotta say, as much as I don't like Puzzle Baron's ability to uh, not choose difficulty. I, I think that the presentation's a lot better. Sophie, what do you think? I don't know if you're still sticking around. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to change that. Yeah, I really don't like that. Yeah. Let me put a link for Puzzle Baron and I'll, I'll show you those. Uh, I'll show you how that looks in a second. Okay, I have to do it in Twitch, sorry. I will say that you can right click on edges and vertices to put down dots. That's what usually used to indicate that that set of two or four cells contains at least one star. Oh, that's interesting. I, I can't really figure that out. Let's see. One button, maybe? I just feel like you would... <laughs> I just feel like you would... Come on. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like because there's always going to be more um, of the not stars, that that should be what you press first. Like, I shouldn't have to do that. Anyway, I'll keep it on the LR. Let's just see if we can get through this guy and then we'll, <laughs> and then we'll stop. 
I'll do some puzzle bear and so you can see how that gameplay looks. Um, but yeah, this row is done. There's definitely a star here. Um, so let's see what else we can see. My goodness. Um, this column is done. So that means the stars for uh, this column are here and here. Um, goodness grief. See, I have <laughs> a lot happening. I have a cataract in my right eye. I have an astigmatism. I have glaucoma. <laughs> this is not fun right now. <laughs> so we definitely have a star here or here. Um, but we've accounted for that, so that's good. Uh, my God. Um, one, two, three, four, five. There are five shapes solidly in the uh, last five rows, so we can't have one here. Um, so that means that this r column is now a three by one. So again, we can take away the middle and know that our stars will be here and here. That completes this row. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so we have one here for sure. And we have one here for sure. So this shape can't have one here. That leaves this as the final star for the square. Uh, let's see. <laughs> this is so hard to see, Sophie. Let's see. All right, so this row is a three by one. We can take away the middle and the stars will be here and here. So this column is completed. This column is completed. Um, and then the second star will be here. The second star for here is here. So yeah, this tracks. I mean, we're we're on the right track. We're we're really close here. Um, let's see. You can't have a star here. I didn't get that around there. So this is uh, a completed. Oh my god. What did I just do? So this is a completed column. And our final stars are here and here. Okay, that yeah, we're done with this. <laughs> I'll play around and see if there's a different way to see it, but I that is not that's just not helping my eyesight. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Um, try right clicking on the edge between two cells. Let me try that real quick. Let's see. Um, just go to the next one real quick and see about the edge. Is that what it is? The, the dots thing? I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Okay, it's only in the in the inside of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good on that. Sorry. <laughs> Let's do some star battles, and we'll um we'll compare and contrast. I think what might what might help me is actually again just maybe seeing if I can play around with some of these uh, settings. Yeah, I don't know, but here's how the star battles play is. Uh, it does like the dragging and all that. We'll do a ten by ten. Um, We'll, we'll go right to a two star. So this is a 12 by 12 two star. Here's how you can uh, select what you want to do. Um, and so here's the only real indication you get of the difficulty. 
So the average time it takes for somebody to do this is 1,877 seconds. The record time is 83. This is actually pretty high. So this is probably a pretty difficult puzzle. Um, usually record time for the two stars is about 38 seconds. I'm never going to get close to a record, so I don't even worry about it. Um, but the averages usually are about 300 seconds to 500 seconds as a, as a pretty normal range. So this one's probably a little bit more difficult. Um, so let's see. Yes, yeah, it looks like it's a little challenging. So on the left hand two columns, we have co a complete set of two shapes. So we can't have anything else in these columns except for these two shapes. Um, so we could take that away. And all I'm doing is clicking once and dragging to um, automatically say that these dots are not stars. Um, because this is a stick or a one, a one by <laughs> in uh, this column, we can't have anything else in this column. Um, I did see that network feature <clears throat> on Puzzle SQ, so I would like to try that just to, cause you're technically playing against other people in this one with your timing, but I'm, I'm interested, I'm interested to see if there's some collaborative play with that network feature. Um, so now the red can only be in this column, so we can take away everything else that's not red outside of that column. If we break our cells down into two by two blocks, we can only get one uh, star in any two by two region. So we know that there's at least one star in this area here, this three by one. So we can't have a star here because that would eliminate that entire uh, three by one cell. Um, for this yellow cell, it's a three by three. So we can take away the middle like that. Cause if we had a star here, it would, it would take away everything. Um, so now this is, uh, if we break this light green down into a two by two here and a two by two here, we can't have a star here. Cause that would take away this box and we can't have a star on either side of this one. Cause we wouldn't be able to have two stars in this light green area. Um, let's see what else we can do. This orange, again, if we break that into a two by two and a two by two, can't have a star here, can't have a star here. So now this is a three by two. So we could take away the middle and we know there's a star here and here for the brown. So that's all taken care of. Take away everything around each star cause they can't touch. Now the orange is a three by two, so we could take away the middle. And now that's a star, so this whole column is done. And that second star for the orange is there. Um, now this is a two by two and a two by two, so there's gotta be a star here and there's gotta be a star here, so we can't have one uh, in that green. Um, so the second star for the green, um, for this column, first star for the green's gotta be here. Let's see. So we cannot have a star. Oh, I'm lying. It could have been the pink. So no, we don't know. Now there's definitely a star here. So there's got to be a star somewhere within this four by two range because um, we can we can only have four stars all together in these two columns. So there's definitely a star here. So the other green stars got to be in these two columns. Just something to keep in mind. All right, so let's see if we can kind of count up our blocks. Now with this yellow, we can't have a star here or here because it would eliminate um, our ability to have two stars in the yellow. Um, what else can we start? Chunking down. Um, da, 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 da. And Sophie, let me know if I'm missing something, girl. Because again, I'm, I very much love these puzzles. But I recognize I'm not the best at them. <laughs> um, something here, perhaps. Mm, no, we know there's one. In this range, there's one here, so there's definitely two stars 
in this uh, blue cell or this uh, set of yellow cells, but we've already accounted for that. Um, let's see, column five and six together. Let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yes, girl. So the um, five and six completely hold the purple and light green shapes. So you can't have anything else in these columns outside of uh, these two colors. Great catch, great, great catch. So that means that this uh, fifth column has to have a star here and it has to have a star here so we can take away everything around that side. So that means that the second star for this violet has to be here and then uh, the second star for the light green has to be there. So we could take that away. That leaves this violet as our first star for that and this column is complete. Um, this column, we have to have a star here and um, definitely gonna be a star here so we can take that away. This row is complete. Um, and we have to have a star here so we can't have one here. Let's see. So now this uh, orange is a three by two so we can take away the middle. That leaves that this row is complete definitely going to be a star here for the second orange so we can take that away um, since we know that the the second star for the blue is here we can't have a star here for that um, what is that like a teal um, so for this dark blue section we only have uh, these two sections available so there's got to be a star here and there's got to be one here so we can take away everything next to it so this row is done and there can't be a star around it um, so we know the violet stars here take away everything around it so the second dark blue star is here this row is complete and this column is complete um, this one is too because that second orange star is there this column is complete um, this row is done. Let's see. All right, this row can only be here or here. This row is done. This row, uh, we can only have a star here or in this three by one section. So there could be one or two here. So we have to take away uh, this one because we can't have a star there. Let's see. So just row by row, not see much else. For this pink, it is now a three by two. So we, we have three by anything, we can take away the middle. So that's all gone, there's a star here definitely going to be a star here. Uh, this whole column is complete now. Um, and since we know there's only one star here, there's got to be a star in this oh, sorry, column for the green. And there's got to be one star in this column for the green. Uh, I missed that. Sorry. Um, so that's not really very helpful. So it's either going to be one here or one here or here. Big whoop. Um, let's see what else we got. So the red. Um, all right, we kind of went row by row. Let's just look column by column really quickly. These are all done. Second one's here. So red can be here or here. Um, <clears throat> if we look at these two columns together, um, let's see if we can fit four stars in these blanks. So we'd have one here, two, three, four, and then five. So now we're not really 
deducing too much that way. Um, let's try with the uh, lavender and the gray. So we have one, two, three, like a whole bunch. So no, <laughs> that's not really helpful. Let's start with the bottom two rows and see if there's four stars that we can find. So we know one and two for sure. Yeah, and then we have three and then four. So there's definitely a set of stars uh, or one star here and here. Um, so maybe if we can find where else there are, there's a gray star, we can start to eliminate where there are not stars. Um, let's see, so we have one in these two rows, one, two, three, four. So there's definitely a star here, but we can't tell if it's uh, gray or lavender. Hmm. So no, that's not too helpful right now. Let me check on Sophie, see if she's got anything. Row seven, let's see what we got. Seven, yeah girl, oh my gosh, I love your eyes. So yeah, in row seven we have uh, definitely a star here and there's gotta be a star in this lavender or gray. So that means this whole column is good. Um, so there's a star here or here. Let's see. If there is a star here, um, I really hate like brute forcing it, you know, like, oh, if it's, if it's here, let's play it out until we can't play it anymore. Um, I like to try to find the logic behind it, but sometimes you have to brute force it. But we're so close to the end here, I'm thinking we can get this one. Let's just try it. Oh, let's see. So I'm going to try to chunk together the rows and columns a bit. Um, just to see. So if we have one, two three, four, that means there's definitely a star here. So if we're looking at, co uh, at columns three and four together, we know we have to have four stars in, in any two by two region. So um, if this is a two by two, that's one. This is a two by two, that's two. We found one here, that's three. So there's definitely a star here. Um, so that takes that one away that completes that row. Um, let's see. That didn't chunk too much else away. There's one here for sure. Uh, Okay, here's something. In this row, we have a three by one. Even though it's across colors, we're still looking at two stars within this section. So we know there can't be one in the middle, gotta be one there and gotta be one there. So we can take away everything around it. That leaves this green as our second green star. So we can take that one away and that one. Uh, now the stars for this row are here and here, so we can take that one away, that one away. This whole column is good. Uh, this whole column is good, and I think we're on our last star here. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> that was really fun. What would you think? Yeah, no brute force. I'm with it. Row nine. I think I saw that one right after uh, you did. That was great. You want to do one more? You want to do a um, three star or do or keep try another two star? And what do you think about the Puzzle Baron gameplay versus the uh, Puzzle SQ? Just out of curiosity. 
not not that I'm aware of. Like I can't even figure out how to go back to the same puzzle I just did. It'll say it'll say you completed it. Um well yeah, I think it just starts it. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Well, I guess it just starts it over. I didn't know that. Does it keep the link? Let me send you that one to see if that's the same one that I just did. No, it just sends like the play link again. So I, it doesn't have like a, where you can play the specific puzzle we just did. Um, yeah, and it doesn't say like it's puzzle number eight two six or something like that. Um, I wonder if you make an account on here if I could like at you. Oh, that didn't do anything. Nope. So yeah, I'm not too sure how to send a specific puzzle. But you know, I tell you what. Oh, and also, yeah, I prefer puzzle SQ for better notation and shareability. Yeah. And also Puzz SQ lets me track puzzle completions with an account and solve a bunch of other puzzle genres too. I mean, Puzzle Baron, kind it'll let you like look at your scores. So like I do a lot of 12 by 12s. So I've solved um, 99, I have a success rate of 82. Um, my average time is ridiculously high, but that's like the most you get. Um, and then there's other Puzzle Baron puzzles. These are just star battles. Um, let's see. Just puzzlebaron.com. Uh, okay. So star battles, vector puzzles, crosswords, circuits, campsites, Philomeno, Kalkidoku, laser grids, trivia, reverse word search, number grids, jigsaws, printables, word search, acrostics, patchwords, crosswords, logic puzzles, those get old so fast. Drop quotes, clueless crosswords, sudokus, cryptograms, word twist, and hangman. <laughs> so that's that's that. But um, my favorite are still star battles. I've tried other. Um, I'd say star battles. I play a lot, and then on. Um, my phone. I don't know if you've played Sl Slitherlink. That's something I've been playing for years and I always go back to it. Sl Slitherlink is like you're given numbers and you have to figure out the, um, let me see if I can show you, the lines around the numbers. But I love it. It's it's really really fun. So you're, let me see if I can show you. Yeah. So sl this is Slither Slitherlink, and so every number is how many lines are around the puzzle. And it's it's just so fun. I've it's one I've been playing forever and ever and ever. Um. Those go up to like 20 by 20s. Oh, what? Oh my gosh. You know, it's just my eyes. I got to like get used to it. So I'll, I'll play Puzzle SQ um, just to maybe get used to the gameplay or the, the, the display. And uh, I think that'd be fine because I, I play colorless um, Star Battles on my phone. I'll play Star Battle Go and there's just one called star battles um that one's colorless too that's the ad sorry but anyway yeah so i 
It's not the lack of color, it's just the way the the lines are, it's just kind of weird. But yeah, I'll check out Puzzle SQ more. How long have you been um, using that one? Because it's it seems really well established. This is like 2019. <laughs> um. Hmm. I wonder if it's also with Puzzle SQ Star Battles, if they're um, trying to get you to move away from doing the dots or the the where you think it isn't as much, perhaps. Oh, yeah, I'll go through that one a little bit more. I'll tell you what, I'll do a um, three by three on Puzzle Baron, just to take advantage of the little one being asleep right now. <laughs> and um, then I'm gonna try to, just on my own, do some Puzzle SQ, see if I can get a little, a little bit more used to that display type. So I'm gonna do a 14 by 14 three star uh, again, no clue if this is a super challenging one. It, I think it might be, but we'll see. Uh, and so I know I'm preaching to the choir, <laughs> but like with um, three stars, two stars, one stars, the same regional rules apply. So if I'm um, seeing a certain amount of shapes within a the, the equal amount of rows and columns, I can start to kind of make deductions from that. So the first thing I tend to do when I go into any puzzle is try to count the shapes, um, just to see if there's some easy eliminations. Um, this one looks really challenging because I'm not seeing anything right off the bat. But let's see, one, two, three, four. So in the first four, columns I see where we have two of the uh, non colors that are in the first four columns that I counted that are encroaching into the first four columns so we could potentially have where the pink and the green could have up to two stars in this fifth column. So that's just maybe something to keep an eye on, but it's not really helping us to make a deduction just yet. Um, for this one, I think we're just gonna have to start with like the smallest shapes and chunk those down a bit. Cause let's see, one, two, three, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my God, here we go. I'm so sorry. That's the mailman. It's the mailman, guys. It's the mailman, babies. So sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, well, I guess the fastest solvers solve without, aux without auxiliary marks. But I use marks just fine. I really think they ought to make the marks clear. I know. Sorry. I have three. <laughs> Do you have any bets? And where are you, actually? Just out of curiosity, if you don't mind telling me. And let's see. All right. So with this one, um, hi. Are you okay? Yeah? Did they wake you up? They woke you up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. You okay? Um, so with this one, we have a three by three. So even though it's three stars, um, because it's more than one, we can still um, take away that middle. Because if we had a star there, because you can't have anything around them, it would eliminate the whole thing <laughs> so that leaves us with a uh, two by 
two here and then a three by one or two by one here and a three by one here so we can take away the middle because we know the two stars have to go here. So let's take everything away around it. Hi, baby. And then the third star will be here so we can take those away. Um, now we have another two by one, three by one so we can know there's a star here. You're just gonna cluck at me. So in this three by one, we can take away the middle and the stars will be here and here. That leaves our third star for the red here and this row is complete. You waking up on me? There you go. Uh, so let's find some other smaller shapes and see if we can help ourselves out a bit. Um, so this is a one, two, three, four, five. So it's a five by two. So we can actually take away the middles because if you have a five by anything with three stars, uh, they can't touch. So you can take away this middle and this middle right away. So we know our three stars will be here, here, and here. You got my hair, you got my hair. So we have a one star here and a three by two here. So we can take away the middle. <laughs> oh, Dave, stop it. That hurts. There you go. She'll take like 10 minutes to wake up fully. It's like a phase situation. She's in like phase one right now. <laughs> so we know there's a star here that's accounted for. Uh, the green shape is, it kind of sorted itself out. So there's a star here that helps us with that yellow star. Um, and then there's definitely a star here and here. This row is now complete. Uh, we've got some really great possibilities for both our purples. So this light lavender definitely got a star here, uh, here, and here. And in this one, we definitely have a star here. We have a three by three, so we can take away the middle. Um, and there's gonna be a star here and here. So we can take away the sides there. Um, Let's see, for this one, we have at least one star here. We could have two, so we uh, cannot have a star here. And I, you know, I like, I like the auxiliary marks. I don't know, I feel like that gives me a sense of completion. Even if I'm to the end of the puzzle and I know where the stars go, I still like to put the dots for some reason. I just, it makes it feel like I've really deduced the logic in full for the puzzle. So I, I get it. I guess if your your aim is speed, I get how that could not be, I don't know, good, but, <laughs> but I like it. So for this one, we have a star here uh, because that's the last one in that column. So we take everything away. And then for this light blue shape or teal shape, uh, we have our second and third stars here. Oh my God. Um, so that leaves for the violet shape here, indigo shape here, that we have one, two, three stars taken care of. So there's gotta be one here, gotta be one here, and gotta be one here. So that's accounted for. That'll actually be our third star for this column. Oh, uh, let's see. And then for this one, since we know there's a star here, that second star for this column's got to be here. And for the shape, that's the third one for that. Um, the third car, the third star for this row has to go here, so we can't have one here. That also means, and that tracks that the the second and third star for this light green shape will be in this column. Um, so let's see what else we've got. Uh, in this column, definitely a star here. This one is not that challenging so far. Um, definitely a star here. As soon as I say that, it's gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna get stuck. 
Um, this violet shape here kind of worked itself out. So there's one here for sure, one here for sure. Uh, that leaves the third one for this row here. Um, that leaves the third one for the lavender shape here. And then the violet is complete, so this whole row is complete. Uh, now we have our final star for this gray here and for this row here, so we can take away this one. And that leaves our third star for this row and for the purple, dark purple here. Um, so since there's one here, there's gotta be two here. So we can take away the middle because it's a three by one. Star here, star here. Take away everything around it. Um, for this shape, we cannot have a star here because that would uh, take away this whole L and we'd only have the box. Um, so let's see. Uh, furthermore, we can't have a star here because we would be forced to put two stars here and we can't because we already have two stars here. Um, in fact, we know that the third star for this uh, pea green shape goes here because uh, if we break again uh, our shapes down into two by twos, there's got to be a star here. There's got to be a star here. And since um, we know that there's got to be one more star in this column, it's got to go here. So we can take away everything else in this column. That leaves our gray. Uh, and then our other star will be there. Let me make sure I'm not missing any notes. Hong Kong. Oh, it's you. Hi. <laughs> That's awesome. A 10 star star, but what? Oh, that's gonna be great. Oh man, that looks amazing. Let me pull this up on Chrome. <laughs> this is awesome. The most I've ever done is five. This is a 10 star star battle, so I'm gonna definitely have a look at that <laughs> nice and let's wrap this guy up we're almost done um, so just briefly we can see that there are uh, two stars here so there's got to be one here there's only the ability to have a, another brown star here and let's see um Oh, I thought we could kind of quickly see where the one would be for this one. There's got to be one somewhere in this range for the the third star for the brown. Um, but let's not worry about that right now. Um, let's see what else we can kind of quickly deduce. So two here. This row is complete. Uh, this row we have one and the third one will be here. Uh, this row is complete. Uh, let's see. Um, for the pink shape, we definitely have one here, one here and one here because if we again break it down into two by twos those are the only places it can go so we can't have a star here because it would take that whole shape away um so if there's one here one here one here one here and we're looking for let's say six all together in these two rows then the other two uh, we'll have to go outside of the pink. Mm. Yeah, it's not really helping us very much. Um, all right, let's just keep going row by row. Got to be one there, but that's not very helpful. Um, there's at least one here. But again, there could be all three on this row, so we really can't tell. Um, so let's just 
take a quick column by column one more time. I'm going to start at this end. So one here, one here, we already accounted for that. Uh, let's see. Sophie, do you see anything? <laughs> column six, let me take a look. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, so the uh, can't have one here because that would uh, eliminate our third column for our third star for column six. Thank you. Um, so that leaves this three by two in the pink. So we know we can't have anything in the middle. So there's definitely a star here and definitely a star here. So we can't have one here. So now this is a five by two. So when there's a five by anything, we can just take away those middles because uh, we can't have anything that would touch uh, the second and fourth cells because it would eliminate everything or the ability to have three stars in the shape. So there's definitely a star here. Um, that was a great, great hint. Thank you. Um, and then let's see what else we can start chunking down <laughs> let's see so it's one here two here all right so in this column we have two remaining so we know one's here the second one's got to be here take everything away around it and in this column we have our third one here and let's see then our th third brown is here so that means we can't have one here all right all right that greens our third for this column hi baby uh wow okay so <laughs> So we have one left here or here. Um, now, if we had the one here, it would remove this one and this one. So it can't be here. So this has to be the star and that has to be the star. So these two columns are complete. They are complete. And can't have one here. So that leaves, this is our third star for this row. And this is our third star for this row. To complete that pea green. This is the third star for the pink. And we are at the uh, end game here now. So there's three for this row and three for this column. There's our third for this row, and this is our final star. All right. That was fun. Oh, Sophie, I had so much fun playing with you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm going to go ahead and hang it up, though, just because baby girl's starting to stir. And um, I, I do hope you'll follow me. Uh, I do try to do... The daily LinkedIn puzzles every day, and then uh, more star store blah, 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 more star battles as I can. Um, I also am here if you'd like to chit chat about sexy times. Uh, this week is Asexual Awareness Week, so um, I'm lifting up uh, asexual awareness. So <laughs> on uh, Sunday we talked about what asexuality is. Uh, yesterday we talked about aromanticism. Today we talked about what asexuality isn't. And so, um, yeah, moving forward as I have downtime between games, I'll just continue lifting up um, ace issues and arrow issues. Um, funnily enough, my husband is, is on the arrow ace uh, spectrum. And so um, been able to share some personal experiences about that. Um, yeah. I have not heard of Puzzler Pride. What is that? Thank you. You're just like a wealth of information. I really love it. 
Oh my gosh, get out of here. So this is puzzles from LGBTQ plus authors with a mix of genres and difficulties. How cool is this? Thanks a lot for this Prima puzzle pack. You are amazing, Sophie. Thank you. I'm definitely signing up for this. Oh, and they have a Patreon. I'll see if I can support that. That's great. Oh, how fantastic. And they have Slither links. What? <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, and I have some. I have a five-year-old, so I have some I can do with her. They have this haunted mirror maze. That looks great. Well, you're just wonderful. Thank you. I'm so glad that we've met. And let me check out this second link. Okay, honey bun. I got you, girl. Okay. Please note that some of the word and hunt style puzzles have themes that may not be appropriate for younger eyes. Those are my favorite kind. Here, let me put that on the screen. This is really, really great. Hey, hi. Thank you, Sophie. There's an Aero A Sudoku in that first one, too. By, oh no, by a puzzler who's sadly no longer with us. I'm sorry. Oh, man. And I tell you, like, I. You know, I'm not, I don't want to pry or, or dig into somebody's personal business, but, um, you know, I, you do, you see a lot of, like, <sighs> oofing, I will say, self-oofing in um, the LGBTQIA plus, 2S LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and it, it breaks my heart. It really does. Um, so that's uh, like why I do a lot of what I do. Um, I am Sophie from sexwithsophie.com. Um, I teach people how to talk to each other about sex and sexuality. My aim is to try to normalize and humanize, you know, people from different walks of sexual life in my podcast, uh, how we present sex education to our, our children, um, so I teach people how to talk to their kids about sex. Um, I teach people how to talk to their partners about sex. Um, I teach people how to talk to themselves about sex. We have a whole program called Guided Masturbations, um, which teaches you how to have more positive self-talk in your self-love session. So, I mean, um, yeah, <laughs> definitely check it out if, uh, if you don't mind. Cause I think it's a big move for us to try to... Um, Again, normalize and humanize things that are just so taboo for no reason. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so cool. All right, let me put this on the screen. I love it. <laughs> this is so awesome. David Miller and there's uh, Jamie Hargrove from the this one. So this is... Um, their dedicated site. Oh, I cannot wait to dig into these. In fact, I'll look at it and see if it's something. Um, I don't know if they are licensed or anything, but I can um, maybe do some of these uh, as we move through what is actually also LGBTQ History Month. So there's a lot going on, <laughs> even though it's not Pride uh, right now. It's also Black History Month in the UK where I live, uh, which is amazing because we get a full 31 days. <laughs> so it's nice here um, as opposed to in February in America where you only get the 28 days or 29 if you're lucky on a leap year. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of black queerness and black queer history from the start of Stonewall with Marsha P. Johnson to, you know, uh, who's a trans woman. There's just so much, so much, so much. So, um, yeah, I love this. I love this. There's a lot that's being lifted up now. And so, yeah, let's keep doing it. But Sophie, I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and sign out.
it has been such a pleasure to <laughs> play with you today. Um, I do try to do these every day, um, usually around this time after uh, I drop my five-year-old off at school. So it's super early in America, but I think it's just the right time in Hong Kong. <laughs> and it's um, almost noon. It's 11 a.m. here in the UK. So kind of a weird time for, for some. But um, yeah, I'm glad we could link up at this time. I hope you'll follow me. And yeah, thank you so much for hanging out. I hope to see you soon. And I'll definitely follow you back as well. Uh, so yeah, see everybody later. Thank you.